So we'll call to order the January 9th meeting of the Planning Commission of the Town of Los Gatos. Ask the staff to do the roll call. Commissioner Birch. Present. Commissioner Sayoc. Present. Commissioner Bourgeois. Here. Commissioner Smith. Present. Commissioner O'Donnell. Here. Commissioner Talisfor. Here. Acting Chair Erickson. Here. <laughs> Um, we would like to acknowledge that we have a terrific new commissioner joining us for the first time tonight, Kendra Birch, and we would like for all the members and all the members of the public in attendance and the staff and the members of the commission to stand with me and let the, our new commissioner lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which he stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'd like to afford Commissioner Birch an opportunity to say anything that she would like to at this time. I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to serve on this commission, and I'm very excited for what we'll accomplish together over the next four years. Great. Thank you, and welcome again. So we have minutes from the meeting of December 12th that were distributed to the commission. Are there any additions, corrections, or the interim chair would entertain a motion for adoption? Commissioner Sayok. I move to approve minutes from December 12th, 2012. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sayok, seconded by Commissioner O'Donnell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Just for the record, since we do have a new commissioner who would not have been present on the 12th, um, I need to clarify whether that was intended to be an abstention um, or whether you had an opportunity to review the record and the DVD for that night to um, be able to participate this evening. I did not, so I should abstain from that vote. That would be our recommendation. Yeah. Let the record show six votes and one abstention. We have uh, no written communications tonight and no requested continuances. The uh, members of the commission serve on a variety of subcommittees and special, special uh, ad hoc committees. Are there reports from any of those from commissioners? None tonight. Um, we, um, as with all public meetings in the town, <coughs> afford the members of the public an opportunity to participate in, a, in two ways at the Planning Commission meeting. One is what is called verbal communications, which is affords the members of the public the opportunity to speak for three minutes on any, up to three minutes on any item that is not on the agenda. The second way, the second opportunity to participate is during the public portion of a public hearing of an item on the agenda. So in either, in in either or both of those cases, we ask that people identify themselves and fill out a, a card that sits behind the, um, the seats in the uh, chamber and then identify themselves and we'll call upon them. So do we have any member of the public who would like to speak to us on any item that's not on the agenda? Apparently not. Um, so the, f the next item on the agenda is the public hearing for um, an architectural, architectural site application S12062, which is requesting approval to demolish an existing single family residence at 16785 Placer Oaks Road. Um, so we would ask the staff, do they have highlights from their staff report or anything to add to the material which has been uh, distributed to the Commission. I do have some highlights for you. The proposed project is the first residential property on the north side of Plaster Oaks, just west of Las Gatas Boulevard. It is surrounded by single-family residential, multi-family residential, office, as well as the approved mixed-use development at the old Ford dealership. The applicant is proposing to demolish the existing single-story residence and to construct a new two-story residence. The proposal would create the largest residence in the immediate neighborhood. 
As previously mentioned, the property is located in a difficult location for comparison purposes. And while the residence is significantly larger than any other residence in the immediate neighborhood, it is also the largest lot and would have an FAR similar to the residences in the area. Based on the size of the residence and some concerns regarding the massing of the residence, staff is recommending the commission remand the application to the DRC for a redesign with specific direction. While staff has not received any co correspondence from the neighbors, staff did speak with the neighbor to the west of the property over the phone. Um, and they have some concerns regarding the size and location of the windows adjacent to their residence. Upon further review of the plans, two of the four existing windows are currently clear story windows and staff would suggest if the commission were to approve the application tonight to incorporate a condition that all the windows along the second story west elevation be clear story windows. That completes what I have for you. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Are there questions for the staff at this time? Commissioner Bourgeois. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. I was wondering if you could just <clears throat> expand a little bit on how this came to planning commission. So it went to DRC. So it did not go to DRC. So it was just at staff and staff recommended some changes. And he said it says in the staff report that the applicant does not intend to make additional modifications to the plan to meet staff concerns. And so for those reasons, it was sent directly here. Can you maybe just give me a little bit of the nature of that back and forth with the applicant? Correct. Staff has a policy based on previous um, direction from the Planning Commission and the Council that we not approve the largest residents by floor area ratio or by size. As a result, this one automatically went to you. Um, there were some other concerns as far as the massing and as far as how uh, well integrated the direction from the consultants um, was incorporated. If I could follow up on that, but I guess what I took away from the staff report is that there were recommendations made by staff to the applicant and they just said, no, we're not going to make any additional changes. Is that, is that correct? In regards to the size of the house, um, the applicant did their best to follow the direction from the consultants um, and what you have before you is, is that result. Um, there were several things that staff pointed out as far as um, areas that we do not feel that they are completely addressed. Um, but since staff was recommending remand, we did not have them go and make additional modifications. Okay, so what we have, the plans we have, is the first cut at the revisions to address the consulting architect's plans, but he did not comment on this revised set. Correct. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Talswar. All right, thank you. Uh, my question is on the consulting architect's uh, August 22nd review on page three. We have um, an illustration of homes on that, on that same side as this proposed home, and then the size, and then the homes across the street. So can you, um, can you tell me what this, the height is of, of uh, the homes across the street? I can't see it on here. The homes on the Ford development, the approved PD plans show between 26 and 28 feet in height. 26 and 28. Okay, so we don't know exactly. And then well, the homes to the, um, if you're facing the proposed home, the homes to the left would be at what height? Do you know that? It's, it's probably in here. I've forgotten it. That information is not provided. Pardon? That information is not provided. Of his report that the lines, the parallel lines he's drawn to the street reflect the height difference between the other two story homes and the uh, neighborhood. As provided by the applicant, yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Smith. I just have a question of clarification. In the documents that we received, it um, they talked about a three-car garage, and the cover letter was also a three-car garage. In the drawings that are up behind us this evening, it says a two-car garage. 
And I'm just wondering if you could clarify if it's a three or a two. It's two from the street, but there is a tandem space um, as well in the back. So they're qualifying it as a three-car garage, while what you see from the street is only a two-car garage. And then um, what I see on the plans is a depth of approximately 36 feet. Is that correct? It, it's not on this. I, I couldn't quite figure it out from the plans we received. I was just looking on the wall. trying to measure it. I was just thinking about tandem parking and the depth of the garage. Correct, it would not meet, if you were to, to do two full car uh, spaces, it wouldn't meet the requirement of the town, but the town only requires two parking spaces. So they're calling it a three car garage, staff is qualifying it as a two car garage and additional square footage. All right, thank you. Other questions from at this time from the staff? Commissioner O'Donnell. This is more of a clarification. I may have misunderstood you. Uh, there are two letters in our file uh, supporting the project, which I took to be neighbors. So uh, you a mo moment ago had said there, were no, there was no correspondence. You're correct. I, I misspoke. I forgot about those. I apologize. All right. Thank you. Other questions at this time? Commissioner Talisfor. Clarification. So um, the applicant um, incorporated many or all of the suggestions from the consulting architect, including the one about um, a reduction in floor to ceiling heights. That's page five of his report, I'm sorry. The applicant would better be able to speak to that. I'm not sure whether that was fully incorporated or not. Okay, thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. One other question on that. My understanding is they did not lower that, but we can find that out. But secondly, I understood the, the um, uh, our town architect had suggested that at least as to a couple of walls that are, there's no indentation or uh, any distinguishing mark, marks on just a solid wall two stories high, um, that the architect had suggested something be done with that and the applicant did not want to do that. Is that correct? It's my understanding that adding the belly band was an attempt at that, but the applicant could speak to that. Well, let me ask you, since you reviewed it, my understanding was that he wanted a setback so the top, the top floor would not be as, as large as it is. Uh, at least on two walls, it is a straight up and down two-story, and the architect, as I understood it, suggested an indentation which would reduce the size uh, of the second floor and would also re reduce the visual impact of the second floor. Do you recall that? Or maybe I'm making it up. We can wait for the applicant, that's fine. I just don't see that as a specific direction. I think he may have brought that up as one of his concerns, but in the specific direction that he gave it, it was not listed. Other questions at this time? Commissioner Birch. Can you confirm the two large trees in front of the house are both going to be removed? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It says that they're proposing that two of the large trees in the front of the house are going to be removed. Can you confirm if both trees will be removed? They are removing the 18-inch cedar, and they will have to remove the 
there's an oak tree located in the right of way mm -hmm. um, adjacent to the front and um, they are also removing an elm tree close to the front of the property thank you other questions of the staff at this time if not we'll move to the public portion of the public hearing and invite the applicant if present to address the commission you have five minutes to uh, add to the report I'd like for you to identify yourself with your address please okay my name is uh, Alan Nikita and I'm the architect of the project and my address is uh, 236 North Santa Cruz Avenue suite 205 and uh, I'd like to use the, the overhead You can also take the mic with you if you want, if it makes it easier for you. Okay, no, it's fine. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to read something. But I would like to uh, hand it off to you can pass among the creatures of the neighborhood. So if I'm talking, I'm going to hand it off to you. The owners purchased the property last March with the intention to build a new home to live in and raise their two young, very active boys. The owners each have parents who visit regularly from overseas and stay for extended periods of time occasionally at the same time, which makes for a busy household. Thus the necessity for a spacious house. In working out the design of the house, the central location of the front oak pushes the buildable area deep into the lot, almost in the middle of the property. And with a young active family, it was necessary to have plenty of backyard space for recreation, barbecue, games, etc. The backyard oak limits the amount of development, such as a swimming pool. To save usable yard space, the house took on a compact shape and eventually the form it is now, without exceeding town requirements for square footage, height, FAR, and setbacks. The owners personally visited the two bordering neighbors and went over the plans with each one of them. The Placer Oaks neighbor requested a second floor window change that we complied with to their satisfaction. The neighbor's letters are included in the staff report. In addressing the size and bulk comments in the staff report, we'd like to bring up some important points that helps justify our proposal. We are not the largest home in the neighborhood. A recently constructed home at 16863 Leroy Avenue is approximately 4,567 square feet. We are not the largest in FAR, as two homes are 0.31 each, including the 3,000 192 square foot home, two houses away. Flat and bulky two-story planes mentioned in the staff report are softened by taking up several of the recommendations from the town's consulting architect. One, a smaller entry porch and lowered roof. Two, using hip roofs, excuse me, using hip roofs places the height emphasis on the roof eave line. Three, a trim banding around the exterior walls at the second floor window sills, and the use of two shades of color reduces visual height. Fourth, we, uh, we deep set the garage doors. So continue on, we have recessed windows set in 12 inch thick walls at the front elevation, casting deep shadow lines on the stacked two story walls. The side yard setback between the house and the adjacent neighbor is 16 feet and allows for more substantial planning along the two-story wall. The actual space between the two homes is 24 feet, allowing for light and air. The other side yard elevation adjacent to the office parking lot has a step back second floor over the hip garage roof below, giving the appearance of a smaller house. The two large oaks on the property, front and rear, assist in lessening the scale of the proposed home just by the sheer mass of their canopies. And lastly, as pointed out in the staff report, due to the specific location of the property at the edge of a residential neighborhood and among office and commercial uses, we feel the proposed size and massing is appropriate. And at this point, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there questions for the applicants? Commissioner Smith. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I did visit the site, so I'm familiar um, with uh, what you're talking about and also the pictures. One of the questions that the staff raised was the screening on the right, as you face the house, on the right side. Um, 
between the house and the parking lot. And I understand from the staff report that um, the applicant was not going to um, add additional screening. And could you explain to me why, what the reasoning is? Uh, we are adding additional screening along that area. I think what she was pointing out, it wasn't as tall as what we have right now. And then maybe if we went over with our landscape architect, we could uh, uh, we can uh, install some different planning in that area to reestablish something that's that's looking what's like there's right now. Well, my my question then is: Is this something that the applicant is going to do? Yeah, we, that's something we would do. All right, thank you. That's all for now. Commissioner O'Donnell. I have. Um, a question, however, it centers, I think, on two walls of the house, and I want to make sure I understand the drawing uh, and also the comment of our architect. Is it correct that two of the walls, and I'm looking at the elevation on, I don't see a page number on this, your drawings, preliminary plans, two-story residence, uh, I'm looking at the uh, elevation from the street, and the wall to the left, um, appears to be uninterrupted. It is a two-story wall without, it's just a two-story wall, straight up and down. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and that, that, that was, and again, uh, that's the front elevation facing Placer Oaks. Yes. Okay. So that's the part where, if anybody can see, and I grant you there's a big tree in front. Mm -hmm. um, but I did go through the neighborhood too, and the house, there's a house two-story, two, -story, two houses down, which as near as I can tell has this wall <coughs> situation too where there's no indentation. It's just a two-story wall and because there's no indentation, it makes the wall uh, perhaps bigger than it, than it might. Uh, did, the, did the architect suggest to you that you do something to make the second story uh, not so imposing? Uh, I didn't get specific direction as to what to do, uh, as he did in other areas, such as the horizontal banding, uh, handling the uh, hip roofs, or lowering uh, and resizing uh, the front entry porch. Uh, there was no ex uh, exact direction for handling that specific thing. Uh, just a comment that it, would, that it appeared flat and bulky. There was no discussion then on having less space on the second floor? No. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of the applicant at this time? Commissioner Talisfor. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your report. So my question for you is, are you familiar with the residential design guidelines? Did you? You must be. You're yeah, I went online here and in Los Gatos. took a look at it. So um, about those vertical walls, what stood out to me immediately from your illustrations and also seeing the uh, the site was the fact that these walls are very tall and it, they're right next door to a single story home mm -hmm. and in the design guidelines we i'm not sure when the other homes were built but today when we have homes that are going from one story to two then we ask them to be sympathetic, no, we don't, but the design guidelines are, refer them to be um, uh, sensitive to the, the one-story house and to set back the second story. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to remind you of that and ask you if, um, if this were to go back for a redesign, that would be something that this commissioner would um, emphasize as wanting to have done. So. Do you have any comment about that? Or? Yeah, uh, I took a look at it, and I, with that 16-foot setback between, uh, you know, the property line and the building, uh, it's it's fairly substantial, uh, you know, it, and it's something we can handle with planting, and uh, there's enough room in that 16 feet to put, you know, put something large in there to help buffer it. If if it went back to redesign and, and I had to step it back, then I'd probably use, be using the remainder of that eight foot setback and I'd probably be within eight foot of my neighbor on the lower floor and then set back on the second floor. Okay, thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. I'm looking at uh, our, our architect's letter and there were two things there. One, his comment on paragraph number seven is after reviewing the story poles 
for the project, consider a reduction in the floor to ceiling heights. Uh, what happened with that suggestion? We felt we, what we had was fine. Okay, and he makes the same kind of comment in three when he says the size of the house relative to nearby homes is increased through the use of a 10 foot uh, floor to ceiling height on the first floor and nine foot on the second floor. So I assume the same result. You just disagree with him on those two points. Yeah, the, the, the homeowner really preferred to have those ceiling heights. Okay, and then the sixth comment he makes is the placement of the trim <coughs> near the second floor eave line results in awkward proportions for this facade walls and tends to further emphasize the visual height of the structure. Um, did you do anything in response to that comment? I think that's when we uh, went into the hip roofs. I think he made a separate comment about hip roofs. Yes, he did. It's paragraph one. Utilize hip roof forms for all roof elements to place the height emphasis on the roof eave line. Mm -hmm. That's a, a different comment than he makes uh, on the one I just previously read to you. Could you read that one more time, please? Okay. Um, it's paragraph six. The placement of the trim near the second floor eave line results in the awkward proportions for the facade walls and tends to further emphasize the visual height of the structure. Yes. Uh, what we had in our, the design that he received was that trim that's sitting on the second floor window sill line. Uh, I had placed it about, a f about two feet higher than it is right now. And he, he uh, you know, did his redrawing of it. He located in that spot. And that was his um, uh, solution to maybe breaking up that mass. And you followed that solution? Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. I think it has a nice look to it. And that's where the, uh, the two color scheme would come in. That upper, that upper portion above the banding would be one tone, and then the lower por portion would be another tone. Thank you. Commissioner Ushua. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate the fact that you're within all the height restrictions and setback limitations, so I'm very thank you for coming in with a project that, that meets all of those, but if you reviewed the residential design guidelines, you'll know that a lot of, I think, what we're struggling with up here is neighborhood compatibility. Mm -hmm. And to my eyes, and driving through the neighborhood and surrounding areas, this does look distinctly different from the immediate neighborhood. And you'll also hopefully remember that there's a very specific definition of immediate neighborhood in that document. So when you talk about a 4,000 square foot house a couple streets over, that that doesn't meet the definition of what we consider the immediate neighborhood. So the consulting architect mentioned a couple times the formality of the house, and it seems a very formal house for a very informal neighborhood. So could you maybe talk me through some of the changes you made in this revision to address those comments and how you feel it f does or does not fit into the surrounding neighborhood? Well, I kind of just read through them uh, with my presentation. They were all there. I think what I can comment on to, to what you're saying is that is that due to the location of the property in that neighborhood we are at the extreme end of this residential neighborhood we border a huge parking lot a huge commercial building that, the, that anchors it across the street we're going to have a mixed-use development with duplexes and, and all sorts of things are going to be going on in there down the street is a townhouse project that with these uh you know these uh, french style roofs and uh, kind of a mixed look in there. Um, I think what what we're in is we're sort of like in between a rock and a hard place with, with the design. We, we have all these uh, other things going on with the commercial uses, uh, the, the, uh, the mixed uses, and then we have this, we're bordering a residential area. So I think we may be stretching it a bit on the design issues for the town if we were you know, smack dab in the middle of a neighborhood, but we're at the edge of a, of a residential neighborhood. There'll never be a house built next to us on that parking lot side. There'll never be anything different other than that mixed use project across the street. Uh, that oak tree will probably be there longer than that house in the front. Um, and then and the homeowner in purchasing this property, he's already put up with certain things that he had to live with the property and now we have the house centered in the middle of the property kind of a small backyard you can never put a pool back there unless it's a very small one and and uh and you know we were struggling with 
stretching the house out on the property or making it more compact. And so that's, that's the design we ended up with. Commissioner Talsfer. Thank you. Um, well, in considering that, did you consider uh, seller aspect as Pardon far? Me, say that again? Did you consider designing a seller aspect into the home to, um, to you know, to uh, maintain the uh, square footage that you want, but also at the same time reducing the bulk and mass? We considered in the very beginning, uh, and then it was uh, discarded. We didn't take it up. It was what? Discarded. We didn't take up that idea. But it was considered in the very beginning as, as uh, additional space. Okay. And then I have one other follow-up question. Uh, so and I think, I think part of it was just uh, budgetary reasons of doing a basement. Okay. So let me ask you, uh, the recommendations from the consulting architect, just so I'm clear about this, he, had, he made seven of them. And are you familiar? You're familiar with them. Right. Have you incorporated all seven? I believe I did. Um, maybe if I could take a look at it again. Page five of his report. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure. The recommendations? Yeah, I see six of them here. Seven, you yeah. I think um, yeah, one through six were, uh, were incorporated in the new design of the house, and number seven is uh, uh, what the other commissioner brought up about the two-story, I mean, about the plate heights on the house. Okay. Thank you. Now, this is a uh, comment when we, when we were going to keep, when we were going to take the tree down. So his report is addressing, and, and that little diagram is it was when we were going to keep the tree. Okay. Commissioner O'Donnell. I mean, excuse me, when we were going to take the tree down. I don't want to confuse you. So in the very beginning, we, we wanted to take the tree down. So we went through the whole thing with the planning department and everything, and finally we decided, okay, was that, that's not going to work. We'll keep the tree. We'll push the house back. And we'll go according to the arborist report. We'll keep the house 16 feet back from, from the trunk of the tree. Um, so what, he's, what he had shown there was planting in that, in that area for the turnaround uh, spot. We would still plant that area out, and we would still provide planting along the side, as he has in the diagram. Thank you. OK. Now, Commissioner Don. Looking at the staff report, in particular, um, page uh, 5 and its paragraph, Conclusions and Recommendations A, um, it says in part, the applicant has revised the plans to incorporate the recommendations from the consulting architect, but the residence still appears flat and bulky uh, due to the two-story wall planes throughout. So I, I take it this is one of the things you don't agree with the staff on. Uh, you're at least unwilling to make any changes to deal with that comment. Is that Exactly. Yeah, the homeowner felt that uh, the house as it was um, and, and, the and everything else that was going around it justified keeping it the way it was. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Smith. I don't want to be redesigning the home, but I do want to ask you um, a question about the interior of it, because what we're discussing is whether or not the second floor should be set back. Mm -hmm. And what I did notice is that it's a very, uh, it's open from the bottom to the top. There's a straight up, very large area. Mm -hmm. Has the own homeowner given any consideration to um, perhaps the setback um, from the front but then to be filling in some of that space that you can, um, I, I notice that the spiral staircase goes up and it's all very open mm -hmm. there. It looks like there's probably going to be like a railing around. Is that correct? Yeah. The two wings? Yeah. That's something that uh, we're under discussion right now about that in the event that we have to do some uh, reworking of the, of the uh, elevations to, uh, you know, get a more setback look to the house. 
So that, that would be something we would consider. You would consider. Thank you. I think, I think the most important thing in any reworking of the plans is the homeowner really wants to keep the square footage. Um, anything that we could work out with uh, changing the, uh, the outside shape of the house, I'm sure he'd be willing to do. But the square footage is very important for the amount of space that he needs for his extended family. Well, I, I, and I just want to acknowledge that as well. So um, thank you for saying that, because what I was looking at was the dimensions of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand why th these dimensions are actually on the right side, the wing where the boys and the guests will be. They are not um, extravagant by any means. But I did see that other room, uh, meaning space inside. And that's why I asked the question. So I, I, I understand mm -hmm. what the homeowner is looking for here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions of the applicant at this point in time? Okay. Thank you. So we would offer other members of the public an opportunity to participate in the public hearing if they would like to comment on this particular case. No one's come forward. The applicant would have normally three more minutes to rebut what other people said, but Yeah, I would just like to reiterate, we would like to keep our square footage. I know that Marnie was saying, well, we're going to the, the Planning Commission because you're going to have the largest house on the street. And uh, well, shucks, we almost have the biggest lot on the street, you know. So we felt we felt right in, in having the square footage and we, we were keeping it, you know. We were nosing up to the, the, the maximum, but everything was the FAR was under, you know. We, our, our setbacks were a little tighter, I mean, you know, more uh, excessive than usual. Uh, and we'd be willing to rework the design to handle the massing problems, but we would really want to keep our square footage. And I think that's something that, uh, is that we would really hold fast on in, in reworking the plan. Thank you. Any further questions of the applicant from the commission? If not, thank you very much. Okay. We will cl close the public portion of the public hearing and um, ask the staff, are there any further comments that you would like to make at this point in time? And then if not open the floor to members of the commission for comment, questions, or a motion. Commissioner O'Donnell. Let me just make a comment. Um, I personally don't have any problem with the size of the home it's just simply how it's arranged and I do have a problem with the bulk of the home and I think the comment of the staff that I that previously read uh, the resident still appears flat and bulky uh, is uh, always correct when I happen to agree with it but in any event I agree with it um, so when the architect suggests they would be willing to um, uh, revisit this but would not like to reduce the size in essence, that's his problem because uh, I'm not, I personally would not ask him to reduce the size, but I would, again, personal preference, um, would ask him to reduce the bulk and the mass. Now, how he does that, of course, is that's why he's an architect and I'm not. But um, so I just want to make it clear that when you look at those walls and they're just two straight um, bulky walls, uh, if you can, if if he could do something with that to break it up, so when you look at that house from the street, um, it, it it is not so uh, such a, 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 a massive structure. That's personally that's what I would like to see. So I just share that comment. Commissioner Sayok. Okay, I'll make a comment, and then um, if if anyone disagrees, I'll go ahead and and throw a motion out there. Um, I didn't have any specific questions just because the staff report and all my fellow commissioners 
asked um, all the questions that I happen to have. But um, with regards to the comments made, I, I will have to agree that you know I'm quite sympathetic to your need for square footage. And, and as Commissioner O'Donnell said, if you can design a home that fits the, the, the criteria that we're looking for that, and maintain the square footage, then, um, then certainly that's, that's something that we would all want to endeavor in the next iteration and the next design that you come forward with. Um, but I did want to make a comment to one of your comments about um, your dilemma with the neighborhood. And, and um, I do understand you see it as because you're at the end, you have op more opportunities. And when I went to visit the site, I saw it more as the opposite, as you're the first home, you're the entrance to that neighborhood. And particularly when you look at um, the design of what the homes across Placer Oaks would look like, it, what struck me, the image on page five of the consulting architects report is that the width of your home is the same width of the two homes that will be directly across from you. And so when you put all that in together in this combination and you look at the planes and the, um, the lack of the lack of just um, just the lack of it's just one big wall basically and so if you can somehow reduce that so that it's more in keeping with the neighborhood so it doesn't look like a two-story giant box um, that is what I would like to see in the next design and so in keeping with that, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that um, we remand the architecture and site application to the DRC for final action with the direction to redesign the residence to better integrate with the existing neighborhood. You heard several comments on, on possible suggestions on doing so, particularly with um, number seven on consulting art, architect, but um, I, I don't want to give any more specific design criteria in the motion itself. Motion entered by Commissioner Seok. Is there a second? Commissioner Towsfor. I'll second that. Um, would the maker of the motion um, entertain adding on to pay attention to reducing the plate heights? Um, I believe I said the. It was that, was yeah, that number seven is specifically consulting architect Thank recommendation you. number yes, seven. I didn't the see plate that. Height. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Then I, I support the motion. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Sayok and a second by Commissioner Talisfor. Other comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Commissioner Talisfor. Yeah, can I have one more question or a request? When this is redesigned just for my own interest, and I don't know if anybody, any other commissioner would like to see it, but can you just pass that back before us in some way, either, you know, uh, email it or I'd just like to see the result. Can we do that in some way? If that's the commission's prerogative. Would, would you like to do that? Yes, we'd like to see it's that. It's a reasonable request, I think, just as an informational item. Great. Thank you. Okay, next. Item on the agenda is um, electing chair and vice chair for this next year. Um, annually, the Planning Commission, by its protocols, elects a chair and a vice chair at a meeting during the month of January. So the acting chair or vice chair, depending upon what you want to see me at, is at the moment. There's been debate about what I am at this moment with the staff uh, entertain um, motions for nomination uh, nominations for the chair commissioner o'donnell uh, i will move that the acting chair or the interim chair as the case may be uh, be elected as the chair for the the coming year a nomination by commissioner o'donnell second by commissioner bourgeois there are other nominations if not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, the new chair would like to nominate Commissioner Smith to be vice chair and would entertain a second. Commissioner O'Donnell seconds. 
Are there other nominations? If not all in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Any opposed? <laughs> Six and one. Six to one. Okay. We have a If I can, if the chair can turn the mic on. Anyway. Um, report from the Director of Community Development. There is no report this evening. Are there commission matters from the members of the commission? If not, we stand adjourned.